Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Has anybody noticed that people are absolutely everywhere? And you can either let them drive you crazy, I can learn how to enjoy them. And it basically depends on how we decide to think about people. We do have a lot of thoughts about people. We, we have thoughts and opinions about people we don't even know. Well, why are you wearing your hair that way? Well, what are you doing that far? Just silly stuff. Dave and I got in this huge conversation one day over how the man next door to us should be investing his money, and we didn't even know his name. <laughs> That's how silly we are. He was a single man living in this big house, and I'm like, why do you suppose that guy wants to live in that big house by himself? And Dave said, I don't know, maybe it's an investment. And I said, well, I don't think I'd invest it in a house. I think I'd take it. And then all of a sudden, I realized we're driving down the street planning this guy's financial future, <laughs> and we wouldn't have even known how to say hi, Fred, or Sam, or whatever. We didn't even know the man's name. You're with me? Yeah. All right. And so we are going to think about people, and we need to learn how to think about them right. Would you want to be friends with you? <laughs> I don't know about that giggling. That's like, well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Because the, the kind of friend that you are will determine how many really good friends that you have in life. Amen? So, our thoughts, words, and attitudes affect our friendships in many ways. To be honest, nobody has to be lonely. If you're lonely, maybe it's because you're sitting back and waiting for somebody to come and befriend you. Well, maybe you need to go out and sow a few seeds, and then that will begin to come back to you. I will tell you a language that is universal, and I've learned to practice this language. It's the language of a smile. I don't care what language people speak. You smile at them. There are almost no people that won't smile back. Every once in a while, I'll run into somebody that you smile at them. They look at you like you're crazy, but <laughs> honestly and truly, and I was not normally and naturally that kind of person. I've always got something on my mind. I'm always thinking about something. And believe me, I can get out in public and totally ignore everybody and everything that's going on because I'm always like in China or Paris or whatever is going to happen next. But I have learned to take the time to just acknowledge and smile at people, and I almost never have people not smile back. So that's a language that you can use everywhere, and I think it's the language of God. I believe that God is smiling over us right now. So we're going to start by exercising our face. And we're going to form a habit. I mean, not going out and looking like a clown. You know, you don't have to go. <laughs> but just a nice, pleasant little smile. It's amazing. I mean, you get in an elevator and you say, good morning. Everybody will say good morning back. There's very few people that aren't going to say something back. So we need to take a little more initiative Come on. Well, you say, I don't want any friends. I just want to be left alone. No, you don't. <laughs> and if that's your attitude, then there's something wrong inside that you need to get in there and get fixed. Maybe you got hurt somewhere sometime, and so now you just think you're not going to mess with anybody at all. But that is not the way that God created us to be. We all are connected whether we want to be or not. Amen? Good. I got one person who likes this. I'm happy for that. Now, first of all, let me say this. A positive attitude attracts people. A negative attitude usually doesn't win you very many friends. Now, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I just want to throw this out for you to think about. Everybody does not want to just hear your problems all the time. Now, 
It's great to have a good friend that you can share with, but you don't have to share and 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 share. <laughs> and share and share, and then when you wear that one out, go find another one and share and share and share and share and share and share. <laughs> so if you have a habit of just talking about your problems all the time, it's time to make a new habit. And that is to find something good to talk about. And I'll just throw this out for good measure too. Your friends don't want to just hear you talk about yourself all the time. <laughs> now I know none of you do this. You're going to buy this teaching for somebody else you know that's like this. <laughs> I told Dave this morning, I said, boy, you are going to learn a lot today about how to be a friendlier person. <laughs> Actually, if you don't want this, I'll preach to myself. People used to say to me, you know, when I first met you, I didn't like you at all. And I didn't know what the problem was. Well, I wasn't very likable. I talked about my problems all the time. I was selfish and self-centered. If I talked about anything, I wanted to talk about myself. And people will always respond to you if you ask them about them. Well, tell me about your life. You learn how to say that, tell me about your life, you probably won't have to say much else. <laughs> do you have children? Where do you live? What kind of work do you do? Act interested in people. But then that's giving, isn't it? To give our time to really listen to people that maybe we really don't even care about. You know, I was in a doctor's office one day many years ago. I'm always glad when I tell these bad stories about me to be able to say it was many years ago. So this is many, many <laughs> years ago. And I was just really getting started in ministry and and. I'm sitting in this doctor's office and this little old man who broke his leg on the snow, uh, he kept wanting to tell me about his leg. Well, I wasn't, I didn't want to hear about his leg. <laughs> I had my Bible and I wanted to be spiritual. I didn't want to be nice to that man, I wanted to be spiritual. Is anybody out there today? <laughs> Come on, I said, I did not want to be nice to the little old lonely man who had broke his leg, I wanted to sit there and pray under my breath and read my Bible and think how pleased God was with me because I was studying and praying in the doctor's office. Come on, what is true spirituality? You can have your whole Bible underlined, but if you're not nice to people, then the Bible says, what, no matter what you do, if you have not love, all you are is a big noise and a loud clanging symbol. One new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Every single one of you is in ministry. Don't sit and say, well, I wish I was in ministry. You are in ministry. Everywhere you go, you're in ministry. We are what? The light of the world. And in case you haven't noticed, it's pretty dark out there. So everywhere you go, you need to let your light shine. And that doesn't mean that you have to preach a three-part series to everybody you come in contact with. We can start by just being nice. Love is not rude. This is going to be a better day than I thought it might, huh? <laughs> so anyway, I didn't really want to listen to that guy. And because you see, love is all about giving. It's not about getting, it's about giving. And then this thought came to my heart, and I must assume that it was God, because I doubt that I would have thought this in the middle of my plan there. And this was what came to my heart. If that was Billy Graham sitting there, would you be happy to talk to him? Let me tell you what, if, if Billy Graham would have been there, he could have told me about his leg, every follicle of his hair, his <laughs> fingernails, his, I mean, I wouldn't have, I'd have been like. <laughs> tell me about it. Oh. 
because if Billy Graham would have talked to me, it would have made me feel important. But that little old guy wasn't doing anything for me. God had opened up a door for me to do something for him. How do we think before we go out every day? We need to prepare ourselves to be used by God every time we go out our door. And part of your prayer life and part of your time with God that you don't know what to do with can be actually mental preparation, thinking thoughts on purpose that will prepare you to go out and be ready to pay attention to what's going on around you and be used by God any time that God wants to use you. Amen? Do you have a joy draining effect on other people? Are they glad when you leave? <laughs> or are they sad when you leave? When they see you coming, they say, oh boy, here comes John. Or do they think, oh no, here comes John. <laughs> you know, Dave is very positive, and in general, everybody likes Dave, and Dave likes everybody. Now, this, this is going to sound like it couldn't possibly be true, but I'm telling you that it is. In the whole 40 years that I've been, 48 years I've been married to Dave, in 48 years, maybe I can remember two times in 48 years when he told me he didn't like somebody. Twice in 48 years, he didn't like somebody. Uh, we, I'm glad I'm talking about Dave and not me, because... <laughs> Oh, buddy. His thoughts toward people are positive. He sees the good in people. Every Christian's a good Christian. <laughs> that guy's a good Christian. I don't, I don't know why that bothers me, but I'm like, you don't know if they're good. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And not only that, when somebody called Jesus good, he said, why do you call me good? There is none good but God. So the bottom line is, is any goodness we have is only in Christ. It's not in ourselves. So that has nothing to do with anything, but there it is. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Isn't Jesus so much fun? For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, whatever is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there's any virtue and excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. <laughs> so we only get to think pretty thoughts. We don't get to think ugly stuff. How does love behave toward other people? Well, honestly, I believe that all loving action begins in our thoughts about how we're going to see people, how we're going to uh, determine the worth of people. Uh, just because everybody out there is not like me, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with them. But I spent a lot of my, my years thinking that. And some of you are probably still stuck there. Well, what's the matter with you? How could you think that? How could you possibly want to wear that? How could you possibly think your hair looks good? <laughs> See, just because I don't like something, that doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong with it. We are not the standard. <laughs> Come on, this is better than you're acting. We are not the standard for everybody else in the universe. We have rights, and they have rights. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, Love bears up under anything, 
and everything that comes. Now, here we go. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Love thinks good things about people, and love believes the best. Now, if we can get this love believes the best thing, and you see, I, I think that's the way David's, you know, where I started out many, many, many years ago as a judgmental, critical fault finder. Do I have any relatives in here today? Yeah. Let me add one. A suspicious, <laughs> critical, fault-finding, judgmental person. I didn't believe the best. I believed the worst. And that was because I'd had a lot of bad things happen to me. And I had seen a lot of some of the worst of people. But just because I had a reason to be that way, I didn't have a right to stay that way. Now, I want to say that again. Just because you have a reason to be ne negative because of things that have happened in the past, once we know the truth that we have no right to stay that way because God is offering us a better life, but it's got to be according to his way of getting there, not our own way. And the more we love people, the more we get ourselves off of our minds, the more we smile, the more we take time to listen to other people that we'd really rather not even mess with, the happier we're going to be. Well, I just want to be left alone. Well, you're not going to get left alone. They're everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. I get up really early in the morning just so I can have like an hour in the house before Dave gets up. <laughs> and Dave is one of the good ones, but I'm telling you, when I get up, I don't want to hear nothing for a while. It's like, give me my coffee and leave me alone. And he gets up and starts singing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? The other day, I told you a little story before about how he dribbles the soap and all the dishes at night, and I accidentally put my shake and something that had Dawn dishwashing liquid in it, and I drank the soap. Well, Dave is going around then the rest of the day singing that old song, I'm forever blowing bubbles. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's quite humorous at our house. See? We have our own brand of entertainment at this stage. See, when we decide to believe the best, and it does start with a decision. You could make a big change today if you're negative just by saying, you know, God, I really don't want to be negative anymore. I'm sorry that I've been negative, and I want you to start convicting me every time that I'm negative and help me change. You know, when we have bad habits, habits are things that we do without even realizing that we're doing them. And so the first thing we need to do is ask God to start making us aware of what we're doing so we can ask him then to help us do it the right way. You can train yourself to believe the best of people because it only hurts you when you don't. What we believe helps us or hurts us. It doesn't hurt the other person, it hurts us. Many times they don't even know what you're thinking. They may feel the weight of your thoughts if they're negative, but they don't really know what you're thinking about them. But you know, and God knows, and it affects us. When we believe the best of people, it's so much easier to forgive people when they hurt our feelings. Oh, my gosh. You can either say, well, you did that on purpose, and I'm not going to put up with it anymore, or you can say to yourself, I'm going to believe the best. I don't think they really knew that they were hurting me, or I bet they're having a bad day today and something's hurting them. You know, hurting people hurt people. Most people don't get up every day just to go see how mean they can be to everybody. They've just got problems in their own life. 
And when we see people acting that way, it's a great opportunity as a believer to pray for them. 1 Peter 4, 8 says, above all things, all things have intense and unfailing love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins, forgives and disregards the offenses of others. When you believe the best of people, it's so much easier to do this. I love this part about love covers faults. Are you the kind of person that tells everybody secrets or are you the kind of person that keeps people's secrets? <laughs> if you had a secret, would you feel safe telling it to you? <laughs> hmm. Love goes out of the house mentally prepared to help people. Think about it. I have trained myself to do this, and if I can train myself to do it, anybody can train themselves to do it. This morning, as part of my time with God, as well as studying to get ready to come over here, I sat and I purposely thought, you can think on purpose. You don't have to wait to just see what falls in your head. Take control of your thinking and think according to the way you want your life to be. You don't have to sit and just think about what you've got and the way things have always been and how mean people are and how mean, 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 mean. So I sat this morning and thought, now today when I go out, God, I want to be usable for you. I don't want to just be used here. I want to be used in my normal life, my other Joyce life, not this Joyce life. <laughs> I don't think it's enough just for me to do what I'm supposed to in this pulpit. If you want to know the truth, I think God is much more concerned about my private life than he is my public life. And I don't think I'm going to have any power in this pulpit if I don't keep my private life, the one I live behind closed doors, straight. Amen? I mean, if you're, if you're going to have a bumper sticker, then be the real deal. Amen? So I sat and thought this morning, I'm going to encounter a lot of different people today. I want to smile. I want to be friendly. Help me remember, God, to pay attention to what's going on around me. I don't want to ignore any needs that I come across. Now watch this. Let's see how Jesus was. John 5, 5, and 6. One of my favorite stories, but I don't, I'm not going to tell the whole thing. I'm just going to draw an example. There was a certain man who had suffered with a deep-seated and a lingering disorder for 38 years. You know how many people you run into every day? Not anybody you know, just a certain person, just a person, and they've been having a problem all their life. When Jesus noticed him, I love the fact that Jesus noticed things. He didn't go out just with his own deal on his mind and is so focused on his own plan. I don't have any time to mess with that crippled man. I'm on my way to Jerusalem to preach. Let's pray that God will help us to begin to notice what's going on around us. Let's notice the people in our churches that are lonely and hurting and by themselves. Let's notice the person at work that looks like they're depressed. Let's pay attention when somebody says, the motor went out of my car and I don't have any money to fix it. Well, we don't want to listen to that because God might ask us to help them. I don't want to hear that. So sometimes we'll come up with something, the devil will make a suggestion like, well, of course the engine went out of their car. They've got all kinds of sin in their life. <laughs> like that's an excuse for us not to help them. That's exactly the person that it would be good to help because they're the ones that have never seen or felt real love in their whole life. Come on. Now remember, our thoughts, words, and attitudes affect our relationships in many ways. And one way to examine our actions is to ask ourselves the question, would you want to be friends with yourself? I think that's an interesting question.
un unfortunately in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa and this region in KwaZulu-Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of as well uh, is quite horrendous. Even in the area we were, we were scared for the kids. It's heartbreaking when they're missing. I'm not going to let that happen. That's why I'm fighting for this area. Some of the children in this area mm -hmm. have disappeared? Yes, they did. What we never found them. Before we opened up this crutch, they are safe, healthy, good. So these early childhood development centers are not uh, little nice-to-haves or nursery places where they keep kids, you know, have fun and play games. They do all of those things, but this is actually investing in long-term benefit. This really is something that we can install into a community that opens up the door of the community for us to share the gospel and really stands as a witness, as a shining light into the community about the love of Christ. And we have such great opportunities through our Classrooms of Hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe classroom learning opportunities for young children. You and your special gift today will change lives. Vragen? Bel ons op. Wij zijn er voor je. Telefoonnummer 026 20 22 100.